The date is August 1st, 1991. Terminator 2 has just walked out of the fires of creation and into theaters in Hong Kong. This sci-fi opus of time travel and techno-terror destroys its competition, leaving all movies behind it a centering pile of box office corpses. Now, audiences demand a movie that will wow them with explosions, big guns, and even bigger special effects budgets. Audiences can't be bargained with. They can't be reasoned with. They don't feel pity or remorse or fear. And they absolutely will not stop ever until they are entertained. You are a film producer named Lam Chua. You have had success in filmmaking, even a few Jackie Chan pictures under your belt. But can you make a movie that can compete with and outdo Terminator 2? Others have tried. They failed. What is the movie about? Who's going to star in it? What does Hong Kong cinema do to compete in the war with the machines? Yep, you make a movie about a cat. But this isn't any regular cat. No, no, no. This is a magnificent monster of a magical cat. An alien cat! An alien cat that does kung fu, brawls with beast dogs, gets shot at by zombies, fights with the blob, flies into the inside-out cookie dough hole of a roasted cookie monster, and spirit bombs that bastard back to the hell it crawled out of. You're gonna make Lao Mao, the cat, the wildest, craziest bit of Hong Kong cheese to never have gotten the recognition and popularity it deserves. <laughs> Our film starts with a man woken by the sounds of incessant hammering from a room somewhere above his apartment at night. The man goes upstairs to investigate and discovers a strange old guy, a pile of what looks to be cat guts, and a whole lot of mystery. He clues his friend Wisely in on the situation. Wisely is something of a genius slash gumshoe slash sweaty woman lover. In addition to the apartment mystery, Wisely learns that thieves have robbed a museum. He finds the thieves hideout and a cat. Wisely discovers that our cat is actually a cat burglar. It and its two human accomplices are stealing ancient techno relics from museums. They're going to use these relics to wipe out something called the Star Killer and return home, wherever that may be. Fearing something bad is going to happen if this plan is not stopped, Wisely hires a killer Cujo Kung Fu hound to capture the cat and get more answers. <laughs> The dog and cat collide in one of Hong Kong's most bizarre and amazing fights, filled with wrestling moves, Looney Tune holes in the wall, and so much more. cat suplexes the dog. The cat makes the dog eat that trash can, but some cat DNA left behind from the fight allows Wisely to learn the truth of what is actually going on. It turns out home for the cat and its two accomplices is out there. Somewhere way out there, past the second star to the right, and straight on till midnight. That's right, our feline is actually an alien, an alien general, sent to Earth to defeat the Star Killer. The Star Killer is a horrendous blob that rides around in hobo bodies, exploding out from them like a fungi fiend from hell, killing and consuming any humans that get in its way. With this newfound knowledge, Wisely realizes he's in the deep end of the That is called the Star Killer. What's worse, the killer is now a roasted and rotting Terminator Gruesome that's on a gun blasting rampage to kill the cat. And Wisely is stuck in the crosshairs. With only its alien reflexes and superior senses to defend itself, the cat must eradicate the blob without losing too many of its nine lives. Can our hero stop the Star Killer before it grows to consume the world? Will the cat make it back home to places unknown with his friends? Will Wisely find a less sweaty woman? And who is going to pay the vet bill for that insane ass kicking the dog received? Holy sh! There is no adequate way to summarize this movie. There's just no way to do it. You have to go watch this movie. Y you don't even have to watch the rest of my video. Just go watch the cat. Would you believe that the cat is actually based on a book? That's right. Someone was insane enough to actually write this story before it was a movie. The cat is actually adapted from Hong Kong author Ni Kuang's Wisely series. 
which, as you might guess, is about the main character from The Cat, Wisely. The series lasted from 1963 to 2004 and comprised over 150 novels. <laughs> Reading some of the titles, though, you can see how Ni Kuang wrote something as crazy as The Cat. I mean, just look at these book titles. Body Snatching Monsters, The Plague Demon, Detachable Man, A Transmuting Fox, Bee Cloud. These titles are so tantalizing that I would absolutely love to read some of these. Well, I actually did some digging and found out that you can. A few of the Wisely titles were adapted into manhua from Singapore, or Chinese comics, and some of that manhua was translated into English in the 90s. This seems like a rare thing to happen, so I decided to buy as many of the books secondhand that I could online. It was by following this string that I came to the Ball of Yarn, an actual copy of the comic book version of The Cat. This time it's called The Old Cat. I am pleased to say that the story is pretty much 90% the same as the movie, which is really cool. The only real major differences are that the alien star killer is not in the original story at all, which makes sense. The original story is kind of charming and funny, not super violent and gory. In it, the alien cat came to Earth during the Egyptian dynasties, observed that humans were slaves that built pyramids all day, while cats sat around luxuriating in the adoration of the mortals. Seeing this, the alien figured that cats were the superior beings on Earth and transmuted itself into a cat. Q being stuck on Earth for thousands of years as a cat, slowly losing its alien intelligence, desperately seeking a way back to the stars. It's actually a pretty good story and the art is good. If you can find a copy, go for it. I'm hoping I didn't buy the last one on the internet. They seem pretty rare, but I really enjoyed it. So if you can find it, get it. Also, if you're trying to watch the cat on DVD or Blu-ray, <laughs> Blu-ray, that's never gonna happen. You're gonna have a hard time. The only DVD release I can find was uh, out of print a while ago and still is. I don't see any people selling it on third party sites either. I did manage to snatch up a video CD. That's like an old pre-DVD version of video from eBay for a pretty good price, and I may be able to watch that, but if you need to see the cat, you can reach out to me and, and I'll help you out. That's not a problem. It was also with my research of the author, Ni Kuang, I found out he's super interesting as well. He was born in China, and then he worked for the communist government in the 1950s. There, he wrote death sentences for all of the souls unlucky enough to cross the party. Eventually, Ni Kuang questioned the party about a man who was due to be executed for what he considered a petty reason. When the party threatened to execute him for asking questions, Ni Kuang decided to get the hell out of China and ended up in Hong Kong in 1957. There, he began a career that consisted of authoring 400 novels, co-writing a number of famous Shaw Brother Kung Fu Wuja scripts, writing the screenplay to Bruce Lee's famous Fist of Fury, writing the screenplay to cult classic Shaw Brothers' Inframan, and lastly, but not leastly, the best known of his works, the Immense Wisely series. It really is a cinematic gift that seeing a crazy movie led to me finding a cinematic great that I was not previously aware of, and hopefully now you're aware of it too, and we can all enjoy the Wisely series, which seems pretty cool. As for the cat movie itself, uh, it features a creative team that will be recognizable to Hong Kong and cult movie classic fans. Producer Lam Chua was responsible for a few of the good Jackie Chan movies from the 80s and 90s, as well as more lowbrow but highly infamous cult sci-fi, fantasy, and horror movies. The cat writers, Gordon Chan and Hing Ka Chan, also wrote Jackie Chan's Dragons Forever, John Woo's Hard Boiled and A Better Tomorrow, among other international hits from Hong Kong. Directing for the cat was done by an utter maniac, Lam Gai Kai, who some may recognize as the writer-director of the craziest manga adaptation in cinema history, Ricky O. Great movie. Stay tuned for more on that one. Lam brought on the same special effects team from Ricky O to perfect the Star Killer's gory, low budget greatness. The creature designs of the cat are as endlessly creative as they are disgusting. It's the thing's little brother, the one that puts the special into special effects. It's easy to see why the cat is as crazy as it is. Like most great art, it comes from a story born out of pure creativity and some tragedy. It was sweated out via teamwork by film maniacs, and it had the perfect timing of creation. 
The creator sought to stand out during what was the peak of Hong Kong cinema business, a time when, on average, over 400 Hong Kong movies were released in a year. With local competition as stiff as that, and films like Terminator 2 coming in from overseas and changing the expectations of filmgoers in Hong Kong and literally everywhere, forever, it's easy to see that the filmmakers had no choice but to put every ounce of soul and effort into making the wildest movie they could. And the cat is wild. I can't tell you enough, there's a dog getting suplexed by a cat. The cat spins around in the air like it's a ninja. It's hilarious. In any case, despite the cat likely doubling the cost of making the movie with its earnings of 2.7 million Hong Kong dollars, the cat was not a runaway hit. It earned only 0.22% of the total yearly revenue at the Hong Kong box office for 1992. Terminator 2's Hong Kong release earned it 27.8 million Hong Kong dollars. As bad as these numbers seem, keep in mind that the cat achieved all that it did with a budget of less than a million dollars. That's 99 times less than Terminator 2's budget. All told, most people watching the cat are going to say that it's just a bad movie, but is being a bad movie so bad? I don't think so, especially not if you're among the best of the bad movies. Maybe the cat doesn't beat Terminator 2 in the realm of great cinema. Maybe Terminator 2 has better special effects than the cat. And maybe, arguably, Terminator 2 sold more Subway sandwiches than the cat. But the cat is the Terminator 2 of bad movies. Seeing movies like the cat gives me hope that we will continue to see filmmakers in impossible situations achieve the possible and outdo the expectations that are put on them. I have a feeling we will see more of this creativity sooner than later. The future is not set. There is no fate but what we make for ourselves. And cats have more than one life. Remember, life sucks, but your movies don't have to. All of these things are designed to frighten a monkey.